Understand there's only one available. Uh, everybody received, I believe, the electronic version of the May 7th, 2019 minutes. Everyone had a chance to review them uh, presently. Excellent. Any, are there any observations or corrections to those minutes to consider? Hearing none, do I hear a motion to accept those minutes from May 7th, 2019? So moved. Two have been seconded. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Uh, that will bring us to our third item, the acceptance of a donation of 23.9 acres of land off of Kathleen Circle from the Gateway 2 Trust of 1997 and forwarding to the Board of Selectmen with the recommendation. Uh, my understanding is that uh, this is a continued item uh, pending some review and refinement of the, of the deed. Is that correct? Well, for, yeah, for a report to the commission, <coughs> uh, the office had received a request uh, to put this item on the agenda. It was office discovered they had not reviewed the uh, text in regards to what was proposed in the deed, and so therefore, upon a review, uh, had some suggestions, such as it's pretty um, has been recommended in the past and pretty standard uh, to put that um, the land is subject to Article 97 of the amendments to the Massachusetts Constitution. Um, also, from the experiences with. The Essex South District Registry of Deeds, uh, when the town is mentioned as it is in the second paragraph of this uh, document, they like to have the address of the town hall uh, uh, be clearly stated. And then it's also been a past recommendation that when the property is reference to the condition that shall be maintained in. In this case, it was just expressed as open space. Uh, that in the past, the recommendation has that it be explicitly stated that it's for conservation and open space purposes, uh, both. And so have requested um, those edits be made to the document and then spoke to uh, Coughlin's counsel, um, attorney Nancy McCann. Uh, today, who's going to consult with her clients and with uh, town council that didn't see any any concerns at this point in time in regards to what the suggested uh, include items to be included. In the just to clarify, that uh, uh, inclusion of the Article 97, that is language that is going to be in the new. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, so we'll uh, continue that until the next. Uh, meaning pres presum June 18th. <coughs> Suggest a motion to that effect. Thank you. you. Yes, yes. Um, do I hear a motion to that effect? So moved. Second? Second. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor?
this point. Um, but we have a pretty full dance card here. So, um, are there are the parties present for our seven forty five? The request for determination of applicability at eight eleven Havel Street. Okay. Um, just check. This is a legal notice from the Rowley Conservation Commission. In accordance with the Wetlands Protection Act, Massachusetts General Law 131, Section 40, as amended, and the Town of Rowley Wetlands Protection Bylaw, a public meeting will be held on Tuesday, May 28, 2019, at 745, room 5 of the Town Hall Annex, 39 Central Street, to consider a request for determination of applicability filed by Louis Loretto for proposed construction of a 26-foot by 30-foot two-car garage, gravel driveway, and walkway, possibly within the 100-foot buffer zone of <coughs> vegetated wetlands at 811 Haverhill Street, Map 5, Parcel Lot 95 in Rowley, Massachusetts. The applicant has the floor. Please uh, speak into the mic here. Uh, uh, just state your, your name for the record. Louis Barreto, 811 Haverhill Street. Uh, tell us about your, your project and what you're proposing. Uh, I don't have a garage there now. Me and my wife are getting older and we want to build a garage a little closer to the house. The walkway is getting to be too much for us. And it's uh, just to keep the cars clean so we don't have to clean them off in the winter. And okay. And from this, from the sketch that was filed with the uh, with the RDA, it's, it seems it seems that it's um, that all of the work is contained within the hundred foot uh, buffer zone. Is that the? It, it is. It is. Yeah, it's yeah. just scrapped. It. This is this an existing gravel driveway then? Yes. Okay. And the path is existing. This this path between the gravel driveway and the deck is yes. existing. Does anybody on the on the board have any questions for the applicant? Mr. Chairman, may I give a review of the project? Yes, of course. Um, so, uh, um, in wor working with the applicant, uh, there was the consideration of zoning, which. Um, if, the, if you notice the plans before you, there is a 15. 15 foot um, side setback, which is a zoning requirement, and that helped dictate where the positioning of the structure was. Uh, and since we basically used that as a, um, a pivot point or a, or a point not to get any closer to the side boundary line because of the zoning <coughs> requirements. So the area where the garage is proposed. Um, there might have to be a slight relocation of the of the pathway, uh, which is in existence. There also does have to be a slight expansion and a melding of the um, existing gravel parking area in order to match the front of the proposed garage. Um, there's some limited tree clearing. I would say uh, the terrain is is relatively flat where the garage is proposed to be positioned, but there are a number of um, deciduous trees in that location, which um, the site needs to be prepped. <clears throat> uh, but other than that, we also I talked uh, with the applicant about the utilization of crushed down infiltration trenches to um, help infiltrate uh, the runoff in regards to the impervious area from the structure. Um, Recommended conditioning is pretty standard uh, erosion, starting with erosion control and, and review of the site for clearing, and then also to make sure there are any other nearby trees that might prove a hazard to the garage. We're going to assess those at, at the time that we uh, start seeing the site work, the site work done. Um, and then there really isn't, um, 
isn't, isn't really a, a difficult project. It's pretty standard. Mm -hmm. So the suggestion for the commission's consideration is that um, they possibly consider issuing a negative determination with option number three uh, with standard conditions for uh, construction of an addition and with the uh, stormwater uh, info roof runoff infiltration by a crushed stone trench or, or other means. Okay. Uh, the infiltration uh, trenches, is that something that you'd consider? Uh, yeah, for this yeah, my brother has equipment and we've been doing the business and I've worked with concrete and all that, so we're pretty familiar with it. <coughs> you're, not, you're not intending to pave the driveway at Not at this point. No. Walkway or anything? No. Just crushed on. It, yeah. uh, it lets the water run through better. And I don't like the city. <laughs> <laughs> um, there are no further questions from the board. Uh, does anybody in the audience have a question for the applicant? Hearing, um, hearing none, then the uh, chair would be looking for a motion to um, issue the negative uh, determination of applicable. Ne negative determination of applicability, uh, option number three, as described by the agent. Um, do I hear such a motion? So moved and second. Is there a second, I mean? Second. Seconded. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Okay. Good evening. You're all set? You're all set. Yeah, thanks very much. Thank you very much. I think we'll uh, just to get sort of back into the, the swing of the agenda in case there are any parties interested in the, uh, the remainder of our items, we'll, we'll give uh, folks a chance to, to, to catch up and us to catch up to our, to our time. So we'll wait a couple of minutes to, before we proceed. Can we do anything that goes on the end of the agenda? That's a good idea. Let's take a look. Enforcement hours? Uh, we can talk about the pictometry flight. Um, we talk about the new business while we're trying to fill, fill some space back? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, so let's let's talk about the <coughs> Merrimack Valley Planning Council Pictometry Fight for 2020. I believe I saw a memo in here. Brent, why don't you tell us about what this what this is? What is what is pictometry and who are the Merrimack Valley Planning Commission and, and Merrimack Valley Planning Commission is, well, the town of Raleigh is a member community um, because it is situated in their area. The town of Raleigh, through the assessor's office, contracts with Merrimack Valley Planning Commission to do the GIS 
work to maintain uh, the assessor's mapping uh, database, uh, what we call the MyMap program, which is a municipal mapping uh, interface that's available to all the town offices. <clears throat> and through that, um, starting, I th my vague recollection is starting sometime at around the 2004, maybe to 2007 period, um, the a planning commission reached out to member communities and offered uh, the option of contracting with a firm to conduct aerial overflights. Um, now, the way this aerial photography is different from the free um, aerial photography that you can access through Google Earth or through the Mass GIS department is that the firm that does this photography, um, it's called Aerial Oblique Imagery. And it is shot at, very, at a very controlled altitude with very controlled angle of the imagery which allows their proprietary software to then give you the ability to utilize those images and to make measurements both in line linear distances, in square footage distances. I think it even has uh, some representation of um, slope of terrain, of uh, contours um, on it. So you can also determine using their software, you can determine the height of structures. Um, so it ends up having applicability to uh, police for for their work. It has applicability to the fire department for uh, firefighting um, uh, criteria, where the, the height of the buildings can be very important in regards to you know having the correct equipment that can reach rooftops. Uh, for the conservation department, it's um, because the photos are taken just before leaf out they give a, a good view of the ground that's not obscured uh, by deciduous vegetation, which most of the free imagery um, unfortunately has that uh, factor that you see a lot of green, you don't see much of the ground. This allows uh, an assessment, a rough assessment of areas that are predominantly wet, um, such as wetland resource areas. They, um, typically stand out at that time of year by the black stained leaves and the saturated soils looking very dark and, and shadowy, but much more pronounced. Um, and so it saves, it saves the office in, um, in field work where a lot of times where you might be um, trying to make the decision as to whether a property really needs to be visited to see if a person asking you whether they need to possibly file with the Conservation Commission. Um, it can uh, be a good determining factor of an area where you might need to visit as opposed to an area that you can say, well, uh, the imagery doesn't seem to bear out the fact. This combined with the state imagery, which does have a wetlands uh, overlay layer on it, um, allows for much more efficient utilization of staff time and uh, determining whether resources should be expended time to go out in the field or, or not. So uh, this is actually um, it proved very invaluable to the department, um, so much so when the program started off, um, I, would co I acted as liaison and ca contacted other town <coughs> departments who committed various amounts of their expense line to paying for the imagery. I think it was maybe five or six years ago we convinced the selectmen that this had such um, a value to the various town departments that the selectmen moved it as a general line, an expense line item in the budget and so the town departments didn't have to proportion out um, their expenses in order to devote to having this resource available to them. So this is 
So this is a request. It's been um, it's been two years. 2017 was the most recent flight, and they'd like to do a flight uh, spring 2020, which is the recommended interval. And usually every two to three years, you have enough change with construction, building of homes, et cetera, that it then becomes more useful for you to be able to see the, see the terrain and have more up-to-date imagery that you can make decisions on. And so uh, it, it being present on our agenda, it's, they're looking for, um, the Board of Selectmen are looking for us. Right, so I, if, you know, if, if the Board would so direct me, I would recommend um, to make a, uh, a positive uh, input to the Selectmen and, and request that they consider the expenditure of these monies for, for that energy. <clears throat> if it's useful to you in, your, in, the, in the effect of your job, I think that that's probably a very, uh, very valuable product. Then, uh, is that something that you would require a motion from the board? Um, um, yes. Then, um, any questions from the board about the product? So, I guess the motion would be to direct me to communicate to the selectmen uh, support of um, engaging in this contract and the expenditure of those monies for the energy. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So, a question about, about that. My, my, um, my, my background, like, right out of college, I, I started working for a uh, remote sensing firm. And um, I don't know, do you know if they offer any kind of infrared imagery? Do they offer different kinds of products? Because I don't know. They, um, I've never, I've never had cause to ask that question. Sure, for sure. That would be a very. I think that we, you would find that extremely valuable for weapons, for identifying weapons, uh, just from the level of the stuff that it could do. So, if that is available from them, that's uh, something that worth, worth looking into. Who seconded that? Thank you. Uh, Thank you. I think the state's wetlands layer, I think they use um, frequency of light in yeah. order to okay. in order to make that determination in regards to where they um, to where they put on their on their wetlands overlay where they believe there are a wetlands plant community. Um, yeah, I've seen uh, I've seen it very useful in, um, for that. Um, you might if you have a chance to look into it, maybe you could maybe you'd find some of the useful ones. Um, okay. I think we'll go ahead and um, move forward with the with the items. Um, for, for our eight o'clock item, we have a new request for determination of the applicable at one one fifty seven Boxford Road. Is the is the applicant present for that? All right. Let's go ahead and read the legal notice then. This is a legal notice from the Raleigh Conservation Commission. In accordance with the Wetlands Protection Act, Massachusetts General Law 131, Section 40, as amended, and the Town of Raleigh Wetlands Protection Bylaw, a public meeting will be held on Tuesday, May 28, 2019, at 8 p.m. in at the Room 5 of the Town Hall Annex at 39 Central Street to consider a request for determination of applicability application filed by Richard Karam. For proposed installation of an 18-foot diameter above-ground pool on a sand base, possibly within the DEP-approved groundwater protection area zone 2 at 157 Boxford Road, map 2, parcel 27 in Rowley, Massachusetts. The applicant has the floor. If you wouldn't mind speaking into the microphone here. Sure. Just to state your name and uh, give us an overview of Project. Richard Cameron from Boston Road. Uh, just looking to put a pool right behind the house. We're up on the patio. 18 foot long, above ground. I don't see, so this is, uh, this is the sketch plan. I don't see any uh, resource areas or anything delineated on it, but uh, we know that it's in, in the zone two or, or potentially. Do you, is there anything? Um, Potentially um, missing from from the uh, 
the sketch that might be of consideration when bordering vegetated wetlands or anything like that that you're aware of? My neighbor's property has a little bit of wetlands, but it's way up bad. Hmm. Not from close to my property. Okay. Right. So this is a classic example of why the commission may wish to consider if our amendment is approved by the Attorney General's Office of a small small project administrative category. Um, <coughs> Mr. Karam actually, one of the reasons this is done as an application is, number one, because we don't have any other category for something like this. It is 100% within the zone, the DEP approved groundwater protection area zone two. There is some earth disturbance involved in it um, because for this particular type of installation, you remove the turf grass, the sod, and you put down a bed of sand, uh, which uh, Mr. Karen started to do because unbeknownst to him, he didn't realize that he was in right. an area regulated by our pilot. Now, if this was the 100 foot buffer zone to border and vegetated wetlands, there is the category of minor activities under the Wetlands Protection Act that allows a project such as this to move forward if it's 50 feet or more away from the edge of bordering vegetated wetland, the plant community, as long as erosion control is, is utilized. But in this particular situation where we have a bylaw resource area only, um, Right now, this is the way we handle something like this because we don't have uh, an equivalent. We don't have a less intensive, such as the possibility, which uh, again our our amendment uh, gives us the opening for a small project classification that this could more than likely um, be considered for that in in the future. In the meantime, though, uh, we have a, in, a proposed installation which is in, a, in an area that's already been previously developed. The area is also flat as a pancake, uh, no slope or any, anything else. Um, in fact, he's almost sort of circled the wagons by various structures or whatever, so it can't escape even if it wanted to, if you wanted to say that. Um, so the, so the rec recommendation to the commission is that normally we would have uh, proposed erosion control, but it's probably, he's already done the bed of sand, but there wasn't any place for it to go because it's perfectly level terrain. Uh, the only other thing uh, that we normally uh, might say is that the water be drained to go across a long, flat, grass surface. Um, his lot is fairly uh, narrow in regards to uh, the length, uh, vastly exceeds uh, the width. To the, let's see, to the east of that, he has where his gravel drive and stuff, how he accesses his various detached uh, garage, garages on the property, which would not be an appropriate place to uh, discharge or drain the water. I believe it's grassed all to the north of it, right? right. So, so basically just recommending that if and when he does drain it, that it be drained across that grass lawn area to, to the north of it. Um, there really aren't too many other things you might say. And, and really, usually the draining type thing, the reason we focus on that is because usually these are within the 100 foot buffer zone and we're trying to see that the pool water does not directly go sheet flow off into the vegetated sure. wetlands, but it would take a bit for it to accomplish that in this situation. So this is more or less just being a good neighbor and just keeping the water. <laughs> on the What's the, zone. So what is at the, the behind you, at the back of your lot, at the north there? If this is Boxer Road, what's, is this just another? Is this another residential lot behind you here? Oh no, no, it goes into into woods and actually the Mill River. Okay. And this would be slightly upstream of where our well field is, correct? I believe it is. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, the Mill River comes out of the uh, Georgetown, uh, Boxford, Raleigh State Forest, yeah. and is is so flowing in an easterly, northeasterly direction at, at this point. But to the north of his lot, it's it's woods and it's the floodplain and wetlands. But it's quite a quite a distance. Again, there's there's a large grass area there. Um, doubtful the water would ever get to his right. rear property boundary, even if it wanted to. Who's, who's land, is that land behind him? Is that owned by somebody, or is it? I'm sorry. Is that land behind us where he's going to end? You know, going back there where you is that owned by somebody, or is that? Is I didn't it? check it specifically, but if I had to guess, it might be the town of Rowling. Yeah, I think yeah, the, yeah, water, I the water yeah, department. The town. Okay. Thank you. So this also is a little unique, therefore, in how you might think of issuing a permit for it, in that um, we usually handle this via a positive determination, option number five, which we modify slightly by having the attached conditions expressed at, at that point in the document. And then we, and then we also reference option number six, which specifically says the following area and or work if any is subject to a municipal ordinance or bylaws but not subject to the Wetlands Protection Act, which fits this situation to a T. Exactly. Yeah, I, I, I agree that that is very applicable there, so. Any other questions for the applicant or the agent from the board? Anything from the audience? Hearing none. Then I uh, would the chair would be looking for a motion to uh, issue the positive determination of applicability options five with a reference to six as described by the agent. Do I hear such a motion? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. I think we should uh, maybe take up another of our new business items just to fill some more time. Um, how about the uh, hunting request for comment by Travis Neeland? Frank, do you want to uh, fill us in on what that's all about? Let's see. I think I have that. Did I see that one here? Mr. Neeland has respectfully withdrawn his request since unfortunately the uh, timing of the calendar uh, date ran into the end of the season for the particular game that he wished to hunt on, on the property. Which property was that? that is, was the, uh, is the Redgate Road landfill, the landfill right. property that the town owns. Um, interestingly enough, okay, so there's a little opportunity for a slight comment here. Um, the town administrator reached out uh, to the engineering firm whose services we technically employ uh, to do the periodic monitoring that needs to be done. 
the monitoring that is done is basically a gas vapor analysis of a number of uh, vent monitoring wells that go into the landfill to ascertain whether the landfill is um, subject to aerobic conditions that would cause it to be off-gassing and emitting things, I believe, like methane or other organochlorides, maybe? Yeah, methane for sure. Yeah. Um, their, com their commentary back to the town administrator was that they actually uh, would recommend that hunting not be allowed. Uh, they were more concerned with firearms and projectiles that, because they said the liner was only 18 inches down in the ground, and probably you wouldn't get that depth of penetration with a bow and arrow, but they were concerned about any projectiles that, as well as I'm sure they also don't want uh, the, the stacks or the piping of the monitoring wells, they don't want those shat shattered if a bullet hits them or whatever because they do need to be, you need to be closed and open when they uh, do their sampling and stuff. But, but they actually had a cautionary uh, response in regards to having an activity like this occur around the landfill. Yeah, it's good to keep in mind should this come up again. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, if that's withdrawn, then um, I guess you don't need a motion on it, so. Well, no, and it would have been commentary to the selectmen because the petition uh, was to the board of selectmen who have the uh, authority for general municipal property. Uh, in this case, the landfill is not conservation land, so it's not under the direct custody and control of the Conservation Commission. Okay, well, um, so we wouldn't, we, the request for comment, would we, we, we wouldn't, may not even necessarily have any particular comment then if it's not under our, our jurisdiction. Right? Correct. Um, the only other thing I would have offered in, um, in Using the pictometry to analyze the aspects of the site, the MBTA uh, railroad goes right by there. And so I know that the folks on the MBTA do not take kindly to weaponry pointed in any direction towards a commuter train <laughs> at any time of the day. <laughs> so, so that also possibly would have been a concern. <laughs> Although I have a feeling that no responsible hunter would ever point towards sure. a trend, but. Well, with, if the comment were to be to the selectmen, uh, we have a, a selectman in, in, the, in the audience. Do you have that, any thoughts about this, or? Well, I agree, I can't speak for the board. Dave Peterson from the board of selectmen. I can't speak for the board. I mean, personally, we've been getting a number of hunting requests of all kinds of late. Yeah. And my feeling personally, and I speak only for myself, is that with the growth of the town, and all the number of new houses and roads and developments. I would be discouraging anybody from hunting in on town park. Okay. I just think it presents too many issues and too many problems. Right. Thank you for your comment. So did, I guess I understood then, Brent, that you don't need a you don't need a motion from us if it's been done. No. Okay, great. No, the request is then. Okay. Go ahead and moving ahead to our eight fifteen, which is a new uh, request to determine for determination of applicability at twenty eight Tenney Road. Are the uh, applicants uh, present for that? Great. Then I'll go ahead and read the legal notice. <clears throat> this is a legal notice of Rowley Conservation Commission in accordance with the Wetlands Protection Act, Mass General Law 131, Section 40, as amended, and a Town of Rowley Wetlands Protection Bylaw. 
A public meeting will be held on Tuesday, May 28, 2019 at 8.15 p.m. at Room 5 of the Town Hall Annex at 39 Central Street to consider a request for determination of applicability application filed by Earl and Deborah Chesley for proposed demolition of a 14-foot by 14-foot addition and construction of a 22-foot by 19-foot garage addition with 10-foot by 19-foot deck possibly within the 100-foot buffer zone of isolated vegetated wetlands and the DEP approved groundwater protection area zone 2 at 28 Tenney Road, map 5, parcel 48, lot 3 in Raleigh, Massachusetts. And the applicant has the floor. If you wouldn't mind, please just coming up to the microphone to speak. Just uh, give us an overview of, uh, of the project here. Um, you're going to demolish in, in an the existing uh, addition that was placed here 30 years ago. And I'll put it itself. So we're going to add a, a lot to it, bring the washer dryer on the stage, and uh, make it a little bit easier at the state of the house. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So I think I, I think I had some questions about this here. Oh, it was it was explained in this one here. Brent, did you uh, want to give us an overview of this? Yeah, no, this is um, eff effectively this is a bylaw only um, in terms of the resource areas that are potentially impacted. Uh, the pond that the vegetated wetlands are associated to is an isolated pond. It has um, no outlet. And so the wetlands plant community that fringes the pond is an isolated vegetated wetlands. It does have, under our bylaw, a 100-foot buffer zone. Uh, the property, though, is also in the DEP-approved groundwater protection area zone, too. So uh, from from that standpoint, uh, the proposed activities are definitely subject to regulation under the bylaw, but are not uh, in a regulated area under the Wetlands Protection Act. In discussing the project, the disturbance is all in areas that have previously been developed and altered. And we discussed about the appropriate um, deployment of the erosion control, which would be along the edge of the existing pavement uh, prior to um, prior to it getting to the grassed area. He, on the submitted plan, he had a silt fence and, and straw wattles positioned there. I think we pretty much talked about just using uh, and we, did we decide on the waddles or did we decide on the, the, yeah, yeah. And a lot of the, so the new pavement that's going to join into uh, the addition, which is going to have an overhead door and be uh, a bit <coughs> of the garage, is more than likely going to shed water to the paved driveway area, and so it's going to, sheet flow in the direction towards the isolated vegetated wetland and, and the pond. And so we discussed the possibility again putting a crushed stone infiltration trench along the edge of the existing existing pavement as a means of slowing down the water and um, trying to give it a place to infiltrate so it wouldn't sheet flow across the short width of lawn there into the pond. Is that uh, is that um, that all that direction is all going towards is going in a, in a south westerly direction. Um, yes. So would that necessitate the need for those baffles that I've heard you mention in infiltration? Um, no, the air is rather rather level. So the the driveway itself is level, and its slope is towards the pond. So it's really okay. sloping right to left. Or to the to the west, if you if this plan is oriented north south. Is the present driveway paved? Yeah. yeah. So all you're doing is 
just looking at this plan here, it looks like you're, what, you're putting some pavement to the, this new garage, but then also doing some paving to the existing garage? That is correct. Okay. And with, underneath the, uh, the proposed deck, um, Oh. The crust on it, okay. So that wouldn't be any kind of infiltration issue. We wouldn't need to worry about any kind of runoff from that. Um, um, I wouldn't think. Okay. No, but we're we're seeing a, a repetition here tonight where the recommendation would be consideration of a positive determination, option number five, with um, right. with conditions that are typical for erosion control and infiltration of the roof runoff for the addition work on here, and then um, positive option number six, which says that these are bylaw resource areas only and not state regulated resource areas. Are there any other questions from the board? Anything from the audience? Hearing none, the chair would be looking for a motion to issue the positive determination of applicability, positive determination of applicability, option number five. Do I hear such a motion? So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Congrats. Yeah, that's, uh, that's Continuing, continuing on and trying again to stay on schedule here with the um, with what's on the agenda. I think we'll move to some additional new business. Um, we will be looking at the notice of intent to sell land subject to MGLA Chapter 61A, 600 Weathersfield Street, Map 11, Lot 6, Bruce E. Tompkins and Sarah B. Tompkins and Stephanie Desjardins. Um, do we have that such a memo? There is a memo to the commission.
Okay, so this is a um, this is a parcel located on Weathersfield Street, uh, currently, and has been used in the based based on what I'm reading in the memo, has been used in the uh, production of timber in the past, and it's not been identified as beneficial uh, for any uh, for any conservation value. Um, is that a, is that a good summary so far of, of the things that you? Well, I, I wouldn't use the term for any conservation value. It hasn't been specifically identified of, as having uh, unique characteristics that had it previously pre-identified mm -hmm. as that. The commission actually saw, uh, had the applicant make a request for the first lot that was created on there and has, um, the commission has issued uh, order of conditions, I'm in the process of, of writing and issuing the orders um, for lots two and three. Lot one previously came before the commission, but apparently there was a problem uh, with their adherence to the process or something. So we had previously issued a memo of recommendation uh, to the Board of Selectmen not to exercise uh, the option of a right of first refusal uh, for that property, but unbeknownst to this office, we didn't get any feedback. And um, uh, because I had a when I received this submittal, it was unclear to me. It seemed that all three lots were being referenced, and that confused me since we'd already given an opinion on on the first lot. And then I found out that apparently there was a deficiency in there. You was a, either their notification of the process or or whatever, so. So this is for all three lots, right? Yeah, and all three lots, and the property is configured so there is remaining yeah. rear portion of the lot, which is mostly riverfront, bordering land subject to flooding, and also vegetated wetlands all associated with the section of the Mill River that flows through this and property. And so is that property located, that remaining property, has, is that on both sides of the river? Uh, some of it is, yes. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So there would be S some of it. Potentially, some of it if is. there is land, if there's an offer for land to be donated to the town, there would, there would be land on both sides of the river. Yes, well, the applicant for the last two orders identified as lots two and three approached the commission informally and mentioned that they had the intent of, of taking that rear remaining parcel and donating that as conserved open space. So this is lot one, this is lot two, and this is lot three. These two show the proposed structures. The boundary line is here. This is the Mill River, so this is the boundary to the lot. So there are both sides. Of the Mill River on here, and when the Mill River does exit and go off property down here. So there are reasons why we would like to see that land preserved. Yeah, well, so, so again, this isn't part of this particular it is part of it. proposal, but we've been told informally that we could anticipate uh, that being offered to the Commission uh, and that because of the riverine corridor.
So your, so your recommendation here is that we may wish to communicate to the board that a course like an F4 lots um, not be considered for purchase for the protection of open space and natural resources uh, and a right of fir first refusal will not be exercised. And you would need a motion to that effect. Any other questions for the agent on, from the board? All right, um, hearing none then, the chair would be looking for a motion to communicate to the Board of Selectmen as, as described. So moved. Do I hear a second? Sorry. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. This is a legal notice of the Raleigh Conservation Commission in accordance with the Wetlands Protection Act, Mass General Law 131, Section 40, as amended in the Town of Raleigh Wetlands Protection Bylaw. A public meeting will be held on Tuesday, May 28, 2019, at 8.30 p.m. at Room 5 of the Town Hall Annex at 39 Central Street to consider a request for determination of applicability application filed by Vincent D'Amato for proposed construction of a 30 foot by 24 foot garage with 16 foot by 24 foot deck, possibly within 100 foot buffer, buffer zone of bordering vegetated wetlands at 46 Christopher Road, map eight, parcel 19, lot five in Rowley, Massachusetts. Applicant has the floor, if you wouldn't mind. Mr. Mike, please. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. That deck and crushed stone for. Uh, um, so right now, um, um, there's a deck there. There, there's, there's a deck on the proposed on the proposed deck. It's not the whole area of the uh, garage, but it's off the side of the house. Look back. It has a small wraparound, so actually, it needs to be demolished in order for the garage to be. Attached to the existing residence. So, what is on this on this sketch? What this um, number forty six? That's the that's the residence itself, and and that's there's a proposed deck. This is the garage that's going to be attached to the residence. Um, is, what is this area right here? Where this this is? We have uh, if you don't mind. So we've got the roadway here, right? Yep, that's driveway. That's this is driveway. Right now the driveway comes all the way. Sure. So the uh, so the the property slopes downward from Christopher Road, um, not an extreme slope, but a very definite slope. And the edge of the yard. Uh, so the the plan that's being utilized is an old plan that uh, was developed for soil testing that took place. Uh, 
This property is actually two lots as identified by the assessors. So there's a, the lot where it says area of soil testing doesn't have any structures or anything associated with it. And then the lot that's number uh, 46 here where his dwelling is currently located in the driveway and his existing deck on the rear all has um, maintained lawn around it. It slopes down and before it actually gets to the bordering vegetated wetlands, there's actually sort of an unofficial stone wall, which I think may have been created by the stones that were removed in development of the site and development of the lawn. So it doesn't give me the impression that it was, you know, an old field stone wall from pasturing days or whatever. But then it goes into uh, undeveloped forested area and the edge of the wetlands is a slight distance back from that. So overall, the area that's proposed for development is at its closest extent a lot more to the 60 foot distance from the edge of the border of vegetated wetlands. And the actual rear corner of the garage is probably more like 70 feet away okay. from the edge of wetlands. But you're talking a good 40 to 50 foot expanse of lawn, of grass lawn, um, that is between where the edge of the structure will be. Now there's also going to be the possibility because of the slope of the yard and where the garage is going that there's going to be uh, projection of a small retaining wall uh, put on the, on the back there, which the closest point of the end of the retaining wall is 62 feet uh, to the edge of wetlands as I measured at the site visit. So we had a, a discussion on the site in regards to uh, strategies to infiltrate uh, the roof runoff from the new garage structure and because of the site development work and the fact that the terrain um, rises up at such a distance, it seemed that there might be a good opportunity for a subsurface infiltrator or drywall to be put up near the end of the driveway in the side of this proposed garage. I mean, otherwise you could do crushed stone infiltration trenches depending upon the way the pitch of the roof is. Um, but that was our discussion as a means to possibly infiltrate uh, the roof runoff because really other than effectively maintaining the erosion control and having it deployed so that they can do the necessary site work without it interfering with that, that's probably the, the major risk uh, to that work occurring in that area because it's previously altered. Uh, are you considering the application of those infiltration uh, trenches and yeah. the thing? The, the drywall. The drywall. Well, yeah, yeah. Talk about the, the subsurface infiltrator it's might be the best thing to... If I was to put a rock drain on the kids would just throw them. Yeah. Okay. Um, is anybody on the board have any questions? The applicant or the, or the agent? May I look at the site plan, please? Uh, yeah, just a, just a moment, if you don't mind. Does anybody on the board have any questions? Uh, anyone in the audience, ma'am, any questions? No, if you'd like to, if you'd like to take a. This is just an informational meeting, correct? Well, this is a this is a meeting to for um, the applicant to request a determination of applicability to see if uh, what. What jurisdiction the board has uh, over the over the, the proposed project? Well, I, I don't know. I'm probably out of place, but the only reason I'm here is step in, two years stop ago. speaking. Two, two years ago, he had a shed that was put up without permission, and he had to come and get permission to keep the shed where it was. <clears throat> and everyone agreed that he couldn't move the shed because of this um, proximity to the wetland. And he has a, um, an easement. I haven't seen the site plan, but there's an easement right on this property. I don't know where he's on the property. 
So did you want to still take a look at the at the at the plan? You, you may. Yeah. Do you have any? No, that, I need I need that. But. I mean, this is all. This is the work that he's this, the proposed deck, and this is the house. that's the and then this is the proposed garage. And the garage is next to the easement. I'm not sure where the easement. I'm not, I don't see any. The easement is right, um, right here. Okay. Right. Yeah. 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 It's on the further edge. It's on the, the, these are two lots, right? It's on the far, it's on the far it's side. On the far it's side of the stone there. And this is a drainage yeah. easement that's being yeah, talked yeah. about as opposed yeah. to an access easement? Okay. Mm -hmm. This is the easement that we are talking about. Yeah. 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 Any other questions from the audience? So the recommendation, if the commission would so choose, is this is definitely in regulated areas of the Wetlands Protection Act as well as the town's wetlands bylaws. So the recommendation is for consideration of a negative determination of applicability. Option number three with conditions uh, typical for um, addition construction work as, as well as, as discussed, um, erosion deployment of erosion control. There's no clearing of trees per se, so there's only excavation, and then the um, requirement for some type of provision, be it a subsurface infiltrator or dry well, to be utilized to mitigate the stormwater runoff from the new impervious surfaces on the property. Okay. Um, do I hear such a motion to issue the negative determination of applicability as described? So moved. Second. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. There's no idea that it's just a, something we don't want. You will. Yep. Yeah, yeah, you get it. Okay. And it'll be either it's written out like a book. Yeah, well, the conditions will be there, and we'll have to do a, a field determination to figure out where to. So that the erosion control doesn't interfere with your site work. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you very much. You'll have to def you'll have to defend it from your kids, though. Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, just in terms of. And I'm just going to send them away. Thank you. 
the, the agenda is published two days in advance of this meeting. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Determinations of applicability have a legal notice that goes into the town common that appeared uh, over a week before the period. Yeah, that's, 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 that's not required. Uh, not, on, not on this level of application. Hi, it is available for uh, my request for a uh, public document request. Do you, do you have an email address? I can I can email it to you. It's it's uh, scan. Okay, that will continue on. This will bring us to our 845 uh, agenda item now. This is a legal notice of the Raleigh Conservation Commission. In accordance with the Wetlands Protection Act, Mass General Law 131, Section 40, as amended, and the Town of Raleigh Wetlands Protection Bylaw. <coughs> the public meeting will be held on Tuesday, May 28, 2019, at 845 p.m., at the room 5 of the Town Hall Annex at 39 Central Street to consider an abbreviated notice of resource area delineation application filed by Robert Nixon of Taylor Lane, LLC, for proposed delineation of regulated wetland resource areas off, excuse me, areas at land off Daniels Road, Map 9, Parcel 23, in Rowley, Massachusetts. Can you do that three degree turn on that? That's a lot of Please speak in the mic. Sure. Yeah. 
What stream is that? So this stream is um, shown as Taylor Brook. And that runs into? The Mill Brook. The Mill Brook. So it flows underneath the driveway. <laughs> I uh, actually had a chance to visit the site uh, with Brent um, earlier uh, in the week, and um, I, I think uh, I had a couple of uh, questions just about the about about the plan. Uh, maybe, maybe he'll bring them up. Um, I, I, at this point, I think I'd ask him to give us his review. And, um, No, not at all, but my review is, is not complete, so I request that the Commission allow me to finish in the field. I have uh, 51, 51 um, wetlands flags left to review. Um, that's probably 10% or 15% left to do, so I just wanted to ask for that. Um, in regards to uh, the review that's taken place so far, there, I have not experienced any significant deviations. I have um, requested repositioning of approximately a dozen flags. I think two of those were 10-foot um, distance um, movement, but the majority of them have been between three to five feet in regards to repositioning. So overall, based on the percentages of, of flags hung on the site, I'd say that's a pretty, uh, pretty acceptable um, range for what's occurred out there. I don't have um, any lack of confidence in regards to um, the delineation as presented. I do have two, two areas that uh, do merit specific uh, analysis in regards to more extensive soil augering in regards to uh, just how they appear to be um, positioned at this point in time. So if the commission would, would allow, I think, um, you know, in terms of how the commission feels on this, if you have confidence or a lack of confidence of, of the depiction of the wetlands at this point in time, my recommendation is the commission might wish to consider the contingency of allowing the uh, further review of the 51 uh, flags out in the field and then the two areas of concern um, and, is and issue a conditional uh, approval of the issuance of an overlay based on those being appropriately resolved and then the plans being revised to show any, any proposed repit repositioning as well as the repositioning that's already been recommended in the two visits. Uh, plans do need to have a legend um, put on there with the uh, appropriate full labeling of the resource areas involved as, as well as the de depiction of the shaded areas which is the logging harvest, uh, skitter, skitter roads, there is a, a significant gap that is uh, fairly evident on the left-hand side uh, above one of the crossings and extending in a northerly direction for whatever reason. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't know why that wasn't connected, but it's obvious that that was one of their main corridors since it's fairly well trodden and very evident in the field. And other than the fact that they allowed, there was some minor filling that was left at that, but that can be resolved as the project moves forward. That, that particular crossing was not as well decommissioned as it should have been. <clears throat> I note that the plan um, appears to maybe clip the edge of the, the boundary at the uh, on the left hand, on actually the right hand side. Is that is that? True? Oh, and I checked into that. That our 
first ORAD for the majority of the Moran property actually came down to that flag 175. So, I see. Okay. So, so that line had previously been reviewed. But there are some, there are a couple of flags that need to be replaced. I think the deer browsed them in that specific <coughs> area since, since the tooth marks and the aluminum tag. I haven't talked to their dentist yet, but I bet you we could match them. What, uh, what kind of, a, um, you said, that you said that the remaining flags represent, um, what percentage of the total? Five to 10 I'm, I'm just doing a very approximate thing. I, I think what's left to review is about 10 to 15 percent of. And what kind of time do you think that would take you? Uh, two hours. Oh, okay. You're faster than me then. Um, Longer legs. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, that particular side of the site, I wasn't experiencing as many repositioning or, or, or areas of, of concern. So I am kind of postulating that there aren't going to be any, right. any areas that are going to merit um, excessive, excessive time in those particular 51 flights. Which is why you call for the conditional uh, nature of the, of the Right, yeah. right. And especially where I haven't seen relatively sharp digressions in where where the areas are flagged. Like I said, there's only two areas that I believe merit intensive scrutiny uh, on it. Just, but I didn't have a soil auger with me at the time, so it may it may turn out that they're absolutely 100% fine. But I just want to scrutinize that. Okay. Can I ask a question? So is this, this land is, is going to be part of the Falcon Ridge subdivision? Um, or is this in addition? It's in addition. So this is the piece that's part of Falcon Ridge, but this is part of the south, right? from the audience? Then uh, the chair would be uh, looking for a motion uh, to contingent upon the subsequent review of the remaining uh, flags uh, proceed with a uh, conditional uh, authorization of the ORAD, um, again, contingent upon the do I hear that? I'd request consideration of a 14-day of a uh, period of time within which to have the plans revised uh, after the field after the field visit is yep. conducted, of course, uh, so that it doesn't take an excessive amount of time for permit issuance. So for the for the and also for the 14-day uh, review period, excuse me, uh, reissuance of the uh, plans as after. All of the amendments have been have been made. So that's the motion that the chair is looking for. I'll make that motion, Mr. Squire. Do I hear a second? Second. Seconded. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Could I ask you? Uh, Can I ask you? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Do you have potentially the ability to provide the office a, um, the delineation of the flags in a shape file or a, or a file geodatabase format? Uh, I can ask the engineer. If it's if it's not too much trouble, it would be incredibly useful to me. Sure. It's called a shape file yeah. or a file geodatabase. Thank you. Appreciate it.
it's different. No, we have a lot of shows Bring us to our nine o'clock, um, and as well as our nine ten, which are two continued items: continued notice of intent for the application at 491 Main Street, Map 31, Parcel Lots 26 and 27A. Paul Varias proposed construction of a private road and common driveway, a single-family dwelling, 28 foot by 64 foot, and a garage 28 foot by 36 foot. Stormwater facilities, grading, and utilities possibly within 100-foot buffer zones bordering vegetated wetlands, salt marsh, land subject to coastal storm flowage, and great marsh ACEC. And as well as the 910, which is a continued stormwater management permit application at 491 Main Street, Map 31 parcel in lots 26 and 27A, Paul Varias. Proposed construction of a pr private road and common driveway, a single family dwelling 28 foot by 64 foot, a barn 30 foot by 60 foot, and two garages 24 foot by 24 foot and 28 foot by 36 foot. Stormwater facilities, grading and utilities, total site disturbance, and approximately 34,000 square feet. These items are continued. You we need a motion to that effect. Yeah, the, the, we have uh, we received a, uh, rec excuse me, a request for a continuance on these. Um, and the chair would be looking for a motion to that effect to continue these items. We do both. Yeah, we'll do both, and we're going to we're going to continue them to the continue June eighteenth. Yeah. June eighteenth. Moves. Do I hear a second? Second. Second. Move to second. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous continued. 618. Official um, business uh, legal notices concluded. We'll move to the new business items. Um, our first uh, items are the um, our pair of letters. I'd like to take these uh, two letters in concert as they apply to the same uh, parcel of land, that being 285 uh, Central Street. They are letters from 
Attorney Sousa, dated March 27, 2019, and from Steve Comley, dated April 29, 2019. Letters have been provided to the members. Have everybody had a chance to review those letters? Before we uh, commence with the discussion, I just want to uh, set some kind of ground rules about what we will and won't be discussing. Uh, we, we will not be discussing any decisions of previous commissions or their leadership. We won't be discussing the uh, employment of any town employees. Uh, we won't be issuing any edicts or rulings on any matters that are not pre presented to the Commission as of yet. Uh, what we will be discussing is the proper path forward given the conditions on the site and the things that we know that have uh, transpired already. So with that said, um, what we do know is that Mr. Calmly is uh, in engaged in uh, the production of uh, timber products on on the site or is intent to uh, engage in that, in that, and that those activities possibly impact the 100-foot uh, buffer zone to bordering vegetated wetlands or those bordering vegetated wetlands, and he is claiming an exemption to that. Um, again, we won't be ruling on any exemptions. Um, we we, know, we also know uh, that Mr. Comley has a uh, forest management plan and a two disapproved uh, cutting plans. And in my discussion with town council regarding the, uh, what this means, it has been made clear to me that in the absence of a cutting plan, that any exemption uh, must, be, uh, must come before this board. And it is up to this board to determine the exemption there, too. That said, uh, that's the, that is my understanding as, as I have, uh, as I have uh, understood it with, from my discussion with town council. Town council being present, I would ask, have I overstated or oversimplified any of the matters uh, to your... Please, yeah, Mike. discuss this matter, and I expressed uh, some concern that Attorney Souza uh, wrote a powerful letter to your commission which raised substantial doubts about whether Mr. Conley is entitled to the exemption that he claims. The appropriate way to test that would be for Mr. Conley to uh, file a request for determination of applicability with your commission. That is the, the things that we discussed, yes. Okay, absolutely. So, are there any questions about what was discussed from the board? Does anybody have any questions or thoughts on the matter the, uh, as outlined in the, in the discussion so far? Mm -hmm. I, I think basically what you're saying is that our response is that it needs to be an RDA. That's, that's exactly it. Um, so, Steve, uh, you may well be exempt, but that the determination of that exemption uh, needs to be issued from this board is my understanding of, of the law. And we respectfully request that you submit, through an RDA, any materials that you feel uh, validate that exemption. Do you... Have any comment? Okay, very good. Thank you. Um, well, then, that was. Um, okay. Can I ask a question? So basically, we, as a board, we're expressing the process that we expect. Mr. Connolly, or anybody, uh, or anybody, to go to. and so the question is: that clear to you? I don't think it's clear to the board. Nor do I think it's clear to the town's attorney. Exempt. Could you come speak with the microphone? 
No, I, I, I'm capable. Okay, what's your understanding of the example? Our understanding is that certain agricultural, which will include forestry work, is exempt on certain bases. Specifically with, with a forest to, cutting plan. Well, that's part of the process. Um, <clears throat> but this is regardless of whether it's a simple forest cutting plan or it's doing a, uh, a restructuring of the new area of, the, of fields which has never been done before those things which are new have to be approved for the for the impact that they have on wetlands. If there is an existing history and so on, that may already establish the exemption. But there has to be Yes. Yeah. Okay. I think it's pretty clear. Everything was in the A genuine history is not new. This was in place before I was alive. It's not new. <laughs> and, and we just we're just asking you to, to submit that in an RDA. I'm not going to submit anything else. I've submitted everything over and above what I was supposed to submit. You don't need to cut it. I don't need to find a forestry plan anymore. As long as I stay within barriers of accordingly. That is that's I can harrow all of the wetlands. All of them. I don't think that's no, that's that's, that's that's not my interpretation right. of the law. And I'm not gonna find anything else, okay? If I develop the land, okay, if I put houses in there, then I'm gonna come in front of you. Okay? And then I'll submit everything that needs to be submitted. I've got one submitted. We just sent a fleet of lawyers and engineers out to divide up everything. Alright? I don't have to file a forestry plan. You understand that, right? No. I mean, I, I, so, I, so if you're going to claim a, an agricultural exemption on the basis of forestry, my understanding is you do have to file a forestry plan. I don't. Then, then just right. submit it in an RDA so and we'll I consider it. Cut. I believe the limit is ten. Quarters. Okay, so ten. If you cut I think forestry plan. for personal use, I don't think I think I think you. But I'm not going to rule on that. I've given you all the regulations. Everything is really good. I've done everything over and above. Okay, I'm not going to go through the whole thing. And it's boring. I've done everything I'm supposed to. Read the letter. I didn't have to do any of that. The only thing I had to do was file. A permit for a driveway to access this lot. That's the only thing I have to do. That's clear in the letter. I'm and that's basically that's basically what your RDA is for. I'm sorry? That is basically what your RDA would be for. Am I correct, Brent? To, to without, this, without an approved cutting kind of plan. Yeah. Maybe. But the state has referred it back to us so that he files an RDA and the major thing that would be on the RDA is the ability, his ability to access that wood, making a forest line. And it's because it's, we have no record. I, I don't know of any. You have all records. From 1975, I have all of the records. Not in that location. 
Absolutely not. It, it really doesn't matter if we have you. If, if, if you you need okay, to submit them. The you need to submit the materials that. What materials? Well, in this case, you uh, say that there's a plan. You're you're claiming an exemption based on normal maintenance and improvement, and you're claiming that there's a plan that shows the existence of some road. Would, that's that would. Have, Okay, you have a whole plan. I hired an engineer who takes a data lesson. You have a whole plan. You have everything you need to make this determination. I'm not going to accept an RDA. So file the RDA with the plan, and we'll, and we'll make a determination. Okay. So what you're telling me is basically that I'm not existing, and that I have to file the plan. It doesn't have. I'm telling you that your exemption depends on us ruling on it, unless you have a forest cutting plan. No, it doesn't. Then submit it in the RDA and prove me wrong. Okay, right. uh, Maybe the attorney can help with this. What is exactly? What's your understanding of it? Of course. I have to disagree with Mr. Crumley that exempt is exempt is exempt. Exemption is not something that is self-enforcing. Your commission acknowledges an exemption. If an RDA is submitted to you and approves, then an exemption is in place. My advice is that you ask, as you already have, very politely, Mr. Conley, to file an RDA in advance of, say, your next meeting, failing which my advice would be that you consider issuing an enforcement order. Thank you. The, I would suggest that you send another enforcement order. I would suggest that you send another enforcement order out. Okay? My paperwork is done. You have everything. Not going to do it again. I'm sorry if you don't think that I'm exempt. I have proven that not only to you guys, but to the DEP, to Fish and Game. Department of Food Forestry, the town assessors, and the board of I don't understand what else you want for proof that we are farming, and it's been continuous. That is my only word of proof, and I've provided it. And I disagree with counsel. I don't think he understands it either. It is so simple to read a couple paragraphs on the exemption. I have the exemption, and I don't believe it's been taken away. We have followed the rules. You haven't followed the process. So you have rules that you, don't you, you're, you're saying that you think you're following some rules. We're asking you, please, to follow the process that we have in place, not only for you, Mr. Conley, but for everybody else in this town. And we would like to work with you but we need for you to follow the process. And that's all we're asking. Let me ask this, okay? In my line of work, other than fire, I work in a nursing home. Yeah. Nursing home is the most regulated business on the planet. I follow regulations every single day. I don't always agree with them all. But I follow them. And my track record will show you that I follow them. And I don't break them. I run an unofficial practice at the nursing home. Follow all the regulations to the team. I don't think I've read a book in the last 10 years, but I have read every single regulation that I have to abide by. It's not up to interpretation. It's not up to my interpretation. Regulations, I understand that. And I abide by them. Farming is an exempt practice from the Wetland Protection Act. <coughs> now, I'm going to do it. Siri. What is the definition of exempt?
Mr. Comey, I just want to say it's not the intent of this board to be adversarial at all, okay? We, we want very, very, very much to work with you. And I personally, let me finish, I personally appreciate the value that people like yourselves, landowners of such land as yourselves, contribute to the character of Raleigh. And we are dependent upon you and people like you to be stewards of that land, and we want very much to work with you for that purpose, okay? Well, I, I appreciate that, but I don't think this board right now is showing that, all right? I have been quiet. I have done all I've been told over the last 10 years, and I have sucked up to this guy, all right? I don't usually do that, but I have, and I thought I had a relationship with him. Careful. You showed, I've been careful, okay? I'm let not going to be pushed let anymore. Let before. I've done everything that I was supposed to do, okay? Above and beyond. I didn't need to do anything. And I'm not going to do it anymore. Unless I develop it. And I'm getting close to it. And I may be in front of this board, and I guarantee you, when I start subdividing all that property, I will answer to every single regulation. And I will abide by every regulation. Because I will not be exempt. And I know what the process in, entails. All right? I gotta ask you guys if you want to buy it first. That's where it starts. This town won't be able to afford that land at this point because they're blown it up. All right? Development is coming in from Boston. It's gonna happen. I get offers every single week. And my family is getting fed up with turning these guys away. Part, part of we're, gonna join, we're gonna join the masses. Okay? And if you want to know about it, that's fine. But right now, I'm a jack. And I'm not giving you any more paperwork. I'm not doing any more. I've done more than my share of work. I disagree with your attorney. I don't think he understands it. And I don't think the board understands it. I'm not the only one doing agriculture in this town. This is how this town started. There's still a few farms left. They're selling their lots off. Because they've got to go through this process that they're exempt from. And you guys are still holding them. I just want to see. So I, mean, I don't. Else to I, I, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't disagree. I don't. I don't. I don't disagree that you may be exempt. I just. I've never seen the 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 evidence that that that. And if you show me that, I will happily agree with you. Mr. Davis, well, I respectfully, again, uh, ask you to submit, submit with an, in an RDA so that we can consider it as a board, as it, as it pertains to this property. Yes. Is that, is that, you know, what other options do, I, do, do we have available? My advice at this point would be that your board Reflect in its minutes that you have requested of Mr. Connolly the filing of a request for determination of applicability by the time of your next meeting. And that if it is not so filed, you intend to entertain the possibility of issuing an enforcement order. Thank you. We don't, I mean, we don't, we want to work with you, but, and, and no. no. Are you going to answer my questions? In my uh, oh, the, the, um, that was determined to be a, a records request, which I believe you received the, the records for, um, mm -hmm. and that we're not going to discuss that uh, any further tonight. So <laughs> we're not going to discuss those further here, no. Okay. But you've no, received the, re you've received the records, uh, from the records request. No, 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 no. Um, I'm, well, then we're unclear what you're looking for because it was, seems seems to be Did like you read the letter? yes, very very much. What's yeah. I, I don't have it uh, memorized, but if there's anything more than I do. Yeah. So we don't have to answer that. Well, we don't. We don't. So it, it's, it has nothing to do with us having to have to even acknowledge that we read it or that we would really answer it tonight. We're not doing that yeah. here. So that's not going to be a uh, part of this discussion. Um, 
if you would like to uh, discuss that further, is there are means, there are channels for doing that, and that uh, involves uh, submitting a, a formal complaint to uh, to the commission. With you said that there are photos about this about this dumping. Um, I, you said that there are photos of this of this uh, of, of the of the dumping. That is. Yeah, this is based on that. All right. Well, uh, that's going to be the. the I, mean, address address that piece. Uh, I believe I just have. Okay, well, we're not going to discuss that uh, in this uh, forum. This okay. So I have brought to your attention one of violations, illegal dumping of hazardous waste into the what? Hazardous waste. Yeah, that's uh, that was. You didn't read the letter. Did you? So, um, what was brought to our attention was uh, a. Uh, a photo of some uh, some material, which, which to my uh, viewing, was indeterminate of the nature. Um, but that Where was you get that photo? from the agent. From the agent, because he said because he didn't have any photos. Well, no, no, no. He's you. You yourself said that he took uh, took photos of. And he did not have them. No, no, he so did not. So you have the photos. I have a photo. Okay, so he's he's already denied being down on the site. On the day that I quoted in there, he is denied having any pictures. No, no. But you're telling me you have the pictures. That's good. That's great. So now what are we going to do? Now? Let's figure out everybody. Can Nothing to know. Yeah, we're not going to do we're anything. We're not going to do anything. We told you what we're going to do. We're going to ask you for something. You said you're not going to give it to us. I'm not going to give it to That's your choice. But we are going to, we've asked you, we've asked you nicely. You have a chance to still think about it. You can go home, have well, a cup I'm of tea, and think about it. And so, at that point, we are going to be waiting to see that request of applicability so that we can look at it and rule on it at our next meeting. If we don't get that, we are probably going to do something else. Is that a threat? No, we're just going to do something. Like no, I don't threaten people. Maybe that's what you do. We don't threaten people. We ask people to do something. Right, okay. we're, 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 we're we're Mr. Colney, Mr. Colney. This discussion is through. We are moving on. It is very obvious to me that this commission doesn't want to work not only me, but the farms in the area. Anything to do with agriculture. Yeah. And I'm wondering why. This this discussion is over. Okay. Moving on. Based on what we heard from council, I'd recommend that there be one. Yes. To what effect would that the motion would would uh, be that? Uh, I'd say it would be that the commission uh, respectfully requests Mr. Conley to file a request for a determination of applicability by the next meeting, and. I also recommend that you put him on notice that if he chooses not to so file, that your commission may entertain the possibility of an enforcement order. Thank you. The chair is calling for a motion to acknowledge the request uh, that Mr. Conley submit a request for determination of applicability with uh, applicable materials and also. Uh, for the uh, consideration of an enforcement order um, uh, subject to his failure to submit that request for determination of applicability. Do I hear such a motion? So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I abstain. Motion passes. That will move us to our next new business, which is another letter. From the agent. I assume everybody has had a chance to review this. Pardon? 
Now, the letter is from the agent, Brent Bazelak, regarding uh, his treatment at a particular meeting this past March 26, 2019, in which I am sad to say I was a, a, a participant uh, in, in, and had I uh, been aware of the uh, and had more of a voice at the time, I may have put a stop to the treatment, uh, but unaware of uh, particular policies, I regret my uh, at, pertaining to that meeting. Um, Mr. Bazelak's um, service to this commission is unimpeachable, and his, uh, his letter requests an apology be issued for the treatment at that meeting. I find the uh, request sound and favorable and, and it am of the mind to issue such an apology uh, in accordance with his, with his request in a public forum published in the local paper. Now, are there any questions or thoughts about the, the letter from the board? I have only one thought. And that is that I fully agree with this apology. I fully agree with motion mention, uh, mentioning or reading it at the next meeting. But I disagree with publishing it in the newspaper. And the reason is that I think that puts the commissioners in a bad view. Uh, I mean, it's that simple. I just feel that, that, that it's inappropriate for a commission to publish a letter about one of the employees of the town. Okay. Okay. But I, I, I agree with writing a letter. I agree with Making it going in public. his employment file so that it's permanent record, so that anyone checks, you know, it's there and so on, et cetera, et cetera. But it would be made. It would. It would be made public at a, at a public meeting at that hour public meeting. Sure. And that that's where it occurred. It occurred at a public meeting, and I think. I, I think That's pretty not, much all of us are, in essence, pleading no law as far as this policy goes, because I don't know what I, all I can say is that I don't think any of us were given all of the policies of the town to read ahead. So to some degree, we were not responsible for that. However, we are responsible for having let it go. And I, I, I want to say publicly, I'm sorry. I, but I do. Any other thoughts? Yeah, I feel personally responsible for what happened. I'll take personally responsible for what happened in that meeting. But things went farther than they should have, and that no one who works for the town or probably anybody that's on his board or any board in our town should be subject to that type of, uh, well, I don't know if you'd be strong enough to call it harassment, but, you know, uh, Ill, Ill thoughts or ill statements being said about So, Brent, I'll do my apology now, but I don't think any. Uh, I also do feel that what Sam's suggesting is that since it did occur at a public meeting, that I think it's appropriate that that apology occurs at that public meeting. So hearing it mentioned twice, the, the chair will call for a motion to issue an apology um, at the next public meeting, the text of which uh, will be drafted. By uh, the text of which will be drafted by, by myself in, and submitted for consideration at the next public meeting and, and uh, apology default thereafter. Do I hear such a motion? So moved. Second. 
Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. That will bring us to uh, permits and enforcement. Uh, we have no certificate of compliance requests, right? I think we've covered all the new business. That will bring us, uh, I think, to our status reports. Am I, am I on track? I think I'm on track. Yeah. I think I've got to cover everything. Okay, status reports for permits and enforcement. This will bring us to 34 Dodge Road. Is there a legal notice for this? Brent? There's no legal notice. No, no. Okay, so this will bring us to 34 Dodge Road, Map 5, Parcel 104, Lot 3, Giuseppe. Thank you. Giuliano, owner, and Angelo Giadello, Giadello of ERA Equipment LLC, depositing fill containing construction and demolition debris in violation of issued permit SMP number 24-2017. I'm aware of, uh, I think the, the board has seen uh, the communication, uh, with the photos of the, of the, the fill, and uh, heard or read um, a little bit about Mr. And, uh, the agent's uh, site visit. Just, would you kindly tell us, uh, fill us in on your, on your site visit to, to 34 Dodge Road? Did you also mention the communication from the Board of Health? I did not. Nope. But there is a communication from the Board of Health. You're right. And that is. Oh, thanks. Uh, this is a communication from the Board of Health, a uh, letter dated May 23, 2019, to Giuseppe Gi Giuliano, uh, which I will now read into the record. Dear Mr. Giuliano, it has come to the attention of the Board of Health that commercial debris has been dumped and that construction demolition debris is being used as fill on 34 Dodge Road, Rowley, Assessor's ID, Map 5, Parcel 104, Lot 3, owned by Giuseppe Giuliano. To Giuliano. The Code of Massachusetts Regulations does not allow this use. 310 CMR 19.014, Prohibition on Open Dumps, Dumping Grounds, and Illegal d disposal of solid waste does not allow for any waste to be disposed of in an area not designated by the Department of Environmental Protection. You are required to immediately cease disposal storage of off-site materials. You are further required to remove all solid waste, debris, waste, hazardous, and non-hazardous, and otherwise return the area to its pre-existing condition immediately. Please contact Board of Health within 10 days of receipt of this letter to discuss your cleanup schedule. Sincerely, Frank. Marciani. Marciani, our S, Health Services Coordinator. Um, you received the, the letter. Yes. Um, so, uh, Brent, given that, um, we saw the photos. Um, yeah, so the stormwater management permit issued for the development of this property and uh, accompanied by engineered plans. Uh, first off, the permit prohibits uh, utilization of anything but clean, natural uh, fill or soils in regards to grading on the site. Also, the approved engineered plans uh, issued for the property specifically did not show anywhere near the extent of deposition of fill and the proposed grades uh, did not extend into the portion of the property that specifically has the material with a lot of the concrete slabs and construction and demolition debris. There's one isolated pile of fill over in the driveway area that appears to have some asphalt uh, paving in it. That's separate and on the right side of the property, whereas the construction and demolition debris all appears to be on the left side of the property or the western, the western side. So the commission has before them uh, a suggestion in regards to the enforcement order that is for discussion this evening. And if the commission finds the enforcement order adequate, maybe with a clarification in regards to what the timing should be in regards to the property owner's efforts uh, 
to take care of the material, which it appears clear that the Board of Health's recommendation is for that material uh, to be removed from the site and to go to a facility that's uh, appropriately licensed for its handling. So, um, can, I, can I speak? It was uh, approximately 10 tracks ago. I'm sorry, you're speaking to an infant here. There was approximately 10 tracks ago of material that dumped at the address of the 34th Dodge Road. Um, I wasn't around at the time uh, when this material was brought there, but some of the material got mixed up. Okay. Uh, we are going to, going to be bringing an estimator to the site and separating all the debris that has been taken out. Taken out. Uh, whatever material, the ground material, But how are you going to do that? Are you going to, like, are you going to sift it? Sift it with an estimate, yes. Um, because there is a lot of good material there, and it just got mixed up. Uh, I was around at the time, and I apologize that this happened. Um, and we'll get separated, the concrete will be brought to Miles River and Ipswich. Uh, the asphalt will be brought to Brox and uh, Ipswich. And whatever material will remain on the side. Where did the material come from? Ipswich. It all came from all the all the construction debris that came from this switch. Um, I don't. Know. I think I'm a little confused because coming out here, I think didn't the orders say that basically you got to take everything out? That's what I. I mean, I'm and not sift it. Just get rid of all that. Yeah, it's, rid of but it. it's, it's a lot gravel in there too, uh, so there's no need for gravel to come out. I, I don't believe so. Um, I, mean, you know, I, I understand the asphalt has to come out, and I understand the concrete has to come out, but the rest is clean material. Brent, how does one define clean fill? I'm sure there's a definition in the regulation somewhere, and it's probably under, under the solid waste regulations. The question and the concern of the Commission is that where, where that building material demolition debris came from, there's, there's, there's no certainty that the accompanying fill is not contaminated or that it might have a burden of contamination because we don't know the origins well, of it. the material is clean. It's been tested. Uh, so you have the, materi the you material? Have, and you have the analysis? Yes, and is that from... An, a licensed site professional? No, 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 professional licensed guy testing these guys. Okay. Uh, yes, the concrete and asphalt was not supposed to go there. Uh, I wasn't around, it did go there. We will remove it immediately. Uh, we will bring an estimate there within the next couple of days and pretty much take it out. It's, just, it's, it's approximately 10 volts. Uh, okay. So <laughs> I guess I'm concerned that we said that it's been tested, the, the fill has been, been tested, um, but do we, have any, do we have any way to understand the lineage of the, of the fill? Like, it's uh, gravelly silk. It's no, gravelly. I know, but you, you say it came from Ipswich, right? It was tested in Ipswich? Yes. And that, that test material, and that has like an address <laughs> or something associated with it, and we can, we can, we can Verify that the results of that test, which you would be happy to submit to this, this board, uh, are, are specifically tied to that fill. Can we be assured of that? I don't. I, I find that difficult to do. Uh, there's a lot. To, there's a lot to verify here. I mean, there's there's a lot to verify that you. Um, the, the, the fill is clean fill. It's regular fill. Didn't come to it from a contaminated site. We will take the asphalt out, we'll take the concrete out, and that's what we're willing to do. There's nothing else I can say. You know? Well, I, I, I think it's, it's, like, I think it's, it's worth considering. It's worth considering whatever's left over should be tested. It's 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 worth considering that whatever material is left should be should be tested. I mean, it looks like it's mixed too. I mean, these yeah. loads are now 
What may have been This has been mixed up. Yeah, but it's not been mixed up with gasoline or oil. It's like a piece of concrete. The pieces of concrete pieces are not going to be there. Pieces oh. of concrete and... and so does the, drive, does the driver's log show the origin and then specify this destination for that? I mean, it, I think what the commission is struggling with is tying that material to the site of origin and if the site of origin had been tested and you've got, you've got a clean bill of health for, for that particular fill that accompanied the construction and demolition debris, that's, we're sort of talking a chain of custody issue here, exactly. is that that material. Yeah. Downtown, which, which was the foundation was done. Downtown, that's where the material came from. I'm sure when everybody did the foundation, they're not required to test it. They're not testing any lot. But you have actual, you know where that actual came from. They don't know the driveway. They actually, they ripped out the driveway, not only the asphalt, and they said, we'll take the one over. You know what I'm saying? But that one car is only one, like, try it. I think it's more than it is. I think if you, if you, if you take everything, Including the soil, including the gravel, get it, take it all out. I have no problem with that. I, I don't have any problem with that. But if you're gonna if you're gonna sift it on site and leave stuff behind, I w I'm, I'm much more comfortable if you test it after after you're done. So uh, all the lots that got brought fill in, they all were tested at the time. No, if, that, this is a disingenuous <coughs> argument. No, the lots are according to the Board of Health. The solid waste regulations do not allow construction and demolition debris to be used except for sites that have a specific site assignment. So your argument about all residential lots being tested is is really superf superfluous because still, not everybody uses construction still, and demolition no, debris. Is not no, but something else could. This, the, the, soil, the soil that's around that concrete could have been contaminated. You don't know. So again, you're going to test every lot that's being filled in with all those lots that's been. No, but I'm well, did you guys test all the fill all those all the fill that these lots? Did you guys have them all tested? Did they did they use construction? Again, debris? again, those lots it's, did not have construction and demolition it's debris. Until the ground that makes in the concrete, concrete's gonna be removed. It doesn't contaminate the dirt. I mean, you admit you made a mistake. Yes, and we're gonna remove the devil three, and we're gonna leave the good material behind. And we don't know it's good because it could have been potentially contaminated by the other thing. So by well, this, normally we wouldn't have had to, we would not be sitting here right now. You would not have to be okay, here. Okay, but I didn't do this for 31 years. Tell me what is going to be contaminated. Huh? Okay, explain to me now. We don't, uh, we're, not, we're, not, we're, not, we're not LSPs, okay? But you hire well, I'm telling you, the fill is clean. And but you're not an LSP. Uh, so I'm hire one. But so, I'm so, saying, so, I'm so, saying the concrete's not going to contaminate the rock. I don't, I, I, I believe you. Sift it and test the soil after you're done and we'll believe you. I, I don't think it's required to test the soil. It's not required that we have to test the soil. It is required that you don't dump construction yeah, debris. Yeah, we will remove the, we will remove the damaged debris. Like I just told you, but the gravel is going to stay behind. 
remove it all. Everything, this, everything that you put on that site, remove it all. Mr. Chairman, this is also, though, ignoring the fact that the approved plans for this property did not show filling taking place on that particular portion of the property. Yeah, yeah it does. I, I, we shot the grades. It's, he's got almost, with, with the septic system, he's got almost two foot fill. That's not the septic system. We're talking about, we're talking about the abutting property boundary. Yes, there's a two foot fill. And we shot the grades and the other days. That's funny. The approved stamped engineered plans do not show any proposed grades. They show the existing grades for that particular portion of the property. So they'll have they have the septic system. Mm -hmm. Am I right? I, I, I sent I sent you a section I sent yeah, you I, 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 a scan of the I, section I, 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 of the plan. Really there's a two foot fill here. There is no. Yes. There's no two foot fill going to that um, abutting property boundary that has a length on it of 81, 81 81.38 feet. There are no proposed grades that extend over and intersect with that side property boundary. It shows existing grades there. Yes. Not, not proposed changed grades or filled grades. <coughs> So, this is what I told you what we wanted to do. We're going to move the escalator over the next couple of days. We're going to move the demo to the grade. And that's what we're going to do. Um, we would respectfully uh, suggest that, well, let me put it this way. I'll call for a motion that. Why do I have the other one? What's that again? Why do I have the other one? We're going to put it in. Yeah. It's a real unlimited call. I have not the call with that piece of paper. I don't need any more time. Okay. I have a problem with a bank, I have a problem with an engineer, I have a problem with a construction, I have a problem. I have a problem with a large home house. I have too much trouble. They make me too old. I like the time. I like the time while I see a lot of people here. Yeah. And that's why I got another piece of property. The movie ain't on 75 years old. I try to read and I have bad, bad luck. In the beginning, as soon as I started working, I have bad people who work from construction. Mm -hmm. I have people that steal money. Uh, I'm out of cash. I have bad people who want to bring more money and I start with a house. Now I'm finished. I have a question, if I may. Um, I'm just concerned. Because the town's hot top and concrete, I believe, at least 15 loads were behind the old water department. And Mr. Dayslack was involved in that. Um, I'm not sure that that was tested. Well, uh, so like I said, was. We're going to make him test his hot top when the town has. Well, I'm, 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 I'm saying that I don't feel comfortable with um, loads of loads, and, and I wasn't here for that, Mr. Thompson. So, but I'm here now. But I'm here now. But I'm here now. If you're going to require him to test it, why was it? Why did Ryan test it? I'm, I'm here now, and I'm. They actually did, Mr. Conley. I think you're acquainted with Mr. Toomey. Mr. Toomey, a licensed site professional, oversaw. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. We're talking about 34 Dodge. I am going to call for a motion that uh, this enforcement order be amended as necessary to reflect that um, the filled material be removed in its entirety or sifted on site and the residual tested for contamination. Do I hear such a motion? Someone. Second? Sorry. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. You have two options. Either move it all, get rid of it all, yeah. everything, everything you brought in, yeah. or sift it on site as you suggested and test the residual.
take it all up. I'm going to take it up. I'm going to clean up. But I'm going to make sure every talk I see it, they go down around here. They fix us. I'm going to get three quarters. I'm going to put on the news. Okay. I don't have control over what other people do, what people come. Well, you you're, you come before the board with an with, a, with an enforcement order against you. Yeah. I, I mean, we do the same thing. For, And we appreciate that. I clean it up, everything. You only want to win hard enough. Clean it up, and that's it. We, we, as your neighbors, appreciate that. All Thank right. you. Well, I told you guys, I don't want to see anybody. I don't want anybody to go home. I'm sorry. Enough. Thank you for coming down to resolve the issue. Now, you guys are gentlemen. I have nothing against you guys. Nor, you guys nor we, you, you, sir. Nor we, you. You guys have done a job. You see, we got everything in the desk. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We appreciate that. We want to make sure you have the you have the you have the album. Good neighbors. It's all good. You don't need to get the fire. You don't need to get the fire. Yeah. It's a no measure, sir. It's all. Anybody make a mistake. I'm not a mistake. Mistakes happen. Thank, 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 Thank you. Thank you for coming down. Thank you. Thank you, boss. Thank you. us to our next status report at um, this one for 579 Weathersfield Street, map 11, parcel 58, lot 6, Gregory Cassiotis, owner, depositing manure and stall sweepings in local regulated wetland resources mm -hmm. area. Um, we've received the, uh, the enforcement order of which uh, you've Ms. Cassiotis, you've received the enforcement order, uh, and uh, we have your, your letter uh, dated May 28th, to, uh, 2019, yes, sir. in which you say, it appears our compost pile is within the 100-foot buffer zone of our isolated wetland. It is about 70 feet away. Uh, upon receiving the enforcement order on May 22nd, 2019, we contacted contractors to remove the compost pile. We wish to work with the conservation agent to direct us in the proper placement of the pile. We will look forward to resolving this matter as soon as possible. Mr. Greg Cassiotis and Mrs. Sandra Cassiotis, 59 Weathersfield Street, Rowley, Massachusetts, 0969. Uh, Brent, can you give us a review of the, of the site and the conditions there? Um, well, Mr. Cassiotis has a, a barn, a horse barn, and his property, um, I, I don't have a specific sketch of his property. We've been involved with the project on the abutting property to the north. Uh, there's an isolated vegetated wetlands area, the majority of which is located at the rear of Mr. Cassiotis's property, which I'll describe as being the northeastern corner of his property. Some of that isolated vegetated wetlands extends onto the property to the north, but not a majority of it. That area saw a lot uh, of rainwater due to the recent um, heavy spring rains, so it was fairly well inundated. Uh, in the course of his uh, property being used to access and look at issues on the construction project to the north, uh, there, the town planner submitted um, a number of images that showed that stall sweepings and uh, horse droppings, horse manure, etc., had been historically used and deposited in an area which is within the 100-foot buffer zone, 
locally regulated because it's an isolated vegetated wetlands area. Contact of animal waste material um, that can have direct contact with high groundwater poses a potential risk of contamination <laughs> of the groundwater with uh, fecal coliform um, coliform coming from uh, the animal waste and so it's a condition that is um, not recommended to have occur especially in an area that has uh, drinking water wells servicing uh, some of the residents out there although there is town water along the street um, I'm not sure who has drinking water wells and who doesn't but anyway our bylaw calls for um, prevention of pollution uh, which um, this potentially is and so the recommended course of action is to see if the material can be relocated uh, outside the regulated 100 foot buffer zone and that should conversely put it in a drier spot where it isn't as um, frequently subject to inundation or to contact with groundwater which is close to the surface which occurs in vegetated wetland <coughs> areas so so if the commission so directs me um, the cassiotises have indicated uh, that they would extend permission for me to come onto the property and to seek to assist them in finding uh, a practical um, area to relocate uh, that material to. And do, do you, is it your uh, estimation that such an area exists, that you have the, have the spot to put it? I, well, like, I really have compost, and I usually remove it, what's in the area, and uh, I have some high ground, I'm trying to come up with some suggestions, so I'll do Okay. And hopefully I can remove it, and maybe I can just spread it somewhere else, uh, compost this somewhere else. Right. We are willing to work with the commission. Any recommendations? Yeah. Okay. I mean, Great. Many years, uh, my, my wife uses it for flowers. I use it for my pumpkin patch. It's old. It's kind of nice. It's, it's uh, good for lilacs. I might, might take some. <laughs> Is it good for lilacs? Uh, I don't know if it's good for lilacs, <laughs> but it's good for flowers and my pumpkins. <laughs> but yeah. what, 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 in other words, please send out the age. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, sure it's correct. Because you don't want the guy to move it and then it's the wrong. Yeah, you don't want to put the wrong place. Right, exactly. So yeah, we'll be contacted three contractors. Yep. One so, comes to come that day. Yeah, and they were busy. Yeah, yeah. I've been in contact with the one that I feel comfortable with. And I uh, said, so, I just need directors. I don't want to so I'll put it over there. there. Right. But there's no one who can put it there. You have to put it somewhere else. So uh, whatever, whatever you recommend. Okay. We're trying to expedite this to them, um, you know, move on. Exactly where we're at. Well, um, any any questions from the board? <coughs> uh, this is pretty straightforward. I, I, I guess we'd uh, look for a motion uh, that. Um, well, there wasn't any timing put on here, so I didn't know if you wanted to offer any guidance in, you know, when you'd like to see. Uh, the relocation yeah, implemented. Yeah, just, just whenever you come up. I would say. I would say well, that. you're you're at the mercy of someone to do the work. Yes, so. Well, uh, is 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 thirty to sixty days reasonable? Or? Well, why don't you say the end of July? That gives yeah. sixty days. End of July. Yeah. Uh, Sounds good. My, my only concern is it may be wet. I bring yeah. a small excavator there. I'm just afraid it's going to make a mess. Yeah. Which is good. No, but you know, of course, it's raining again. Right. Yeah. So, uh, would Greg come out? So, Greg, what they could do is they could put down planks and they yes. could go to the yes. end of the I planks, pick the material <laughs> up, go back, withdraw okay. the planks, pick some more material up, and do a, yes. do a stage a retreat way. that way. Yeah. yeah, but like you said, it's important to find an appropriate location yes. for yes. it to go to so it doesn't get handled twice. <laughs> The motion we'd be, I'd be looking for would be one uh, to within uh, by the end of July uh, to facilitate the, the removal of this uh, to an area designated by 
uh, mutual agreement with the with the agent and the Cassio. This is. And, con and confirm the enforcement order. And confirm the enforcement order. Yes. So moved. So moved. And, and uh, do I have a second? Second. Seconded. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Um, Aye. Yep. We'll set something up. We'll call us. In between the rainstorms. We'll call us. We'll call you. We'll call us. Sure. Yeah, you don't, you don't have an email, right? Aye. You don't have an email address, correct? Oh, you do? Yes. Oh. Well, no. S send me an email, and then we'll work out a mutually agreeable date and time. Okay. I'm sorry? Yes, it is. Yep. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thanks. All right. Um, seeing nothing else on, on the agenda. Thanks for coming. Thanks. Thanks. Anything further to discuss, Brent? Nothing else on the agenda. No. Nope. All right, then the chair calls for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Moved. <coughs> Have a second? Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye.